So, Brian, uh, tell me, uh, people have thought of Netezo as a database or a data warehouse appliance, uh, an appliance that can speed up SQL queries. Mm -hmm. uh, so typically we see DBAs and database architects really excited about Netezo, right. right? Analytics is a new term for many of the database practitioners. Mm -hmm. um, how should they be thinking about analytics? What does that mean for them? I, I, think, that, I think analytics really is sort of getting to get more out of your data that's already kind of in the warehouse. Um, and analytics doesn't have to be uh, exceedingly advanced to be useful. So I think it actually analytics really starts with SQL anyway. And so a database administrator, somebody who's familiar with using um, data warehousing, uh, is already starting to do analytics. Uh, the questions just get bounded and you can't get quite as much out of out of your data as you'd really like. And the business questions or the research questions or the, the just exploratory questions start to run uh, run out of room with SQL. And so that's where you start needing an extra layer to I get see. more in. Uh, so can you, for the sake of audience, maybe give us a simple example, a primer on, you know, uh, what's an analytics problem you're trying to solve? Sure. Um, so, so there's it, every domain has a number of... Uh, uh, probably an infinite number of questions that you could sure. ask. And there are a number of themes that come across. Um, but some, just to ground it in a few couple of concrete examples, um, clustering is typically one of the early exploratory phases. Uh, and this is the task of trying to take a look at the data as a whole and trying to make similar things group together. Um, and, and then you can analyze, instead of having to look at billions of uh, transactions or, or millions of customers or, um, or maybe thousands even of, of stores in your, in your uh, portfolio, uh, to understand at a, at a more clustered group, I'm going to look at each group and maybe there's only 10 or 12, and I can now get my brain around it. I so might have... An example of a cluster, maybe... Um, so I might have... Cluster, if, I'm cluster, if I'm clustering my customers based on some features that I understand about... You know, I know my domain, I know my customers to know what kind of characterizes them generically. If I try to cluster them together into maybe, you know, people who are leading-edge people, so they're going to be early adopters mm -hmm. and buying new products. The, there'll be people who lag and decide to, to buy mm -hmm. later. There'll be people who are very loyal. Mm -hmm. No matter what goes on, they're really not going to move. Okay. Um, th those help frame how you're going to interact with them. Um, and you can do the same thing, so that's on the customer side. You can do the same thing sort of with products. Which products are staples, and they're just never going to be go out of style? Which products are seasonal? Which products um, really kind of come together and, and are typically sold as a pair? I see. Um, and uh, why is that hard to do in SQL, and how would you do that in, in, with analytics, what's the framework and, and are the constructs different? Can you give us some simple example again of that? So the, the nice part about data mining and, and analytics and data warehousing is that the data is basically represented the same way. It's sort of a tabular representation of data. So I have a bunch of observations and each of which has a number of features. And I can think of that as rows in the database and columns in the table. And, and so it's, it's really attractive that these are on, the, on, on approximately the same page to start with. Um, where the SQL runs into problems is that I can't approach the science of getting real good confidence on what's going on here and maybe find things that are counterintuitive uh, because uh, the way the language is constructed. What I can do, which is nice, is I can validate some preconceived ideas. And so I can kind of validate ideas, but I can't necessarily discover new new ideas. And that's that's the real opportunity with bringing advanced analytics to the to the data warehouse um, and going beyond SQL, where SQL would allow you to really just kind of explore what you already know, as opposed to or or assume you know, um, and validate, as opposed to uh, really trying to learn new pieces. So if you took the clustering example, yeah. you know, how would you express that? You know, the effort, for example, if you had to do that in SQL versus um, in, a, in an analytics language. Yeah. So, so the, the first challenge would end up being is that in the, in the SQL world, you would probably have to guess where you think the centers of mass of each of those clusters are. And then kind of at, you know, assume, okay, for each person, tell me if you're clo you know, which of those 12 centers of mass you're closest to. Um, in an analytics world, you would actually discover where those centers of mass should be, and they move depending on what the data is telling them about. Um, in the SQL world, it's probably a, a pretty gnarly SQL statement. Um, it may be, you know, the, the SQL experts out there might get it down to something a little bit more bite-sized, but it's still a bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and it might not be all that clear of mm -hmm. all the optimizations and tricks that are going on, what's really going on in that SQL. 
In an analytics library, we tend to think of those as a single entry point. You sh we will take care of applying this algorithm that's well known to the data mining world, the statistics world, apply it to the data set and have a pretty clear output that's coming out of it. So the entry point is essentially to issue sort of one statement I and see. it just gets done. So if you think about Netiza's in-database analytics, the, what we call Netiza analytics framework, um, which we often refer to as iClass, but it's really Netiza analytics is sort of the new name for it. Um, it has algorithms sort of prepackaged that would do clustering for you. Is that, that what you said? That's right. Um, and the idea is really to take some of those common tasks, the things that are broadly applicable uh, all over the place, and really provide that kickstart, jumpstart pack, but then leave the opportunity through a similar framework for other people to extend for very specific tasks. Okay. Um, and it would look very similar. And the, the, the goal there being I have a single entry point to an analytics suite, and that's very similar to a lot of statistics packages and data mining packages. Right, right. So we want to make it look right for the data miner because right. he's coming to this that's space. Right. Yeah. So in, in general, we've seen there's a sort of the data miners and the quants and the modelers is a community, and then there's the database people. Right. Uh, I guess through this kind of framework, we're trying to build a bridge between the, both these communities. Is that the way you look at it? Or I, is I do. I actually think in a lot of ways. Um, each of those communities are, are a little bit of the other one as well. So the data miner is also really having to learn about the database. That's where right. the data lives. Right. And so in a lot of ways, they are swimming upstream to get into that. Whereas in addition, you've got the guys on the database side who are doing analytics. Again, it goes back to my sort of simple analytics. Um, but they're still doing analytics on data, and they just haven't approached it with the same the same, uh, uh, you know, the same hat on right. as the data miner. And so I do think that we're, we're at... The, the ground is fertile for really having that cross right. boundary of let's bring you know these two groups of people into a common a common right. place and they can actually work together. Right. Um, and I guess one of the reasons to bring them together is that the line of business, right, the business people who are, who are concerned about solving churn or fraud or Absolutely. risk problems, they want answers fast. They want it on all the data. That's right. right? That's so right. It's essentially forcing people to come together or, or inducing them to come together. I, I think one of the key things with, with big data analysis really is trying to get a hold and use all of the data that you've got because there's the real opportunity that you miss something if you don't use all of the data. Right. And so you might have missed an opportunity in a, in a customer relationship to have capitalized on retaining somebody. You might have missed an opportunity in a financial area to, to really leverage uh, some opportunity there. So bringing the big data mining tool set to the data and being able to look at you know the whole the whole data set and be able to analyze questions and also to see trends. If you take a sample, there's always a question as to whether or not what you're learning is really just about right. that little sample. That's right. um, and I, you know, the needle in a haystack, and I sort of like to say that if you sample, which part of the haystack should you take out to look for the needle? And and we really want to do is look against the entire haystack, the entire, and that's right. what we're really trying to enable. Well, thank you. Uh, so I think in, in summary, you know, this was a great talk. Uh, you know, for all the database practitioners, uh, I, I really welcome them to come and learn about the world of analytics, uh, particularly with Netiza Analytics. We've spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to simplify and demystify analytics. Thank you again. My pleasure.